and welcome to Truth or Politics. I'm your host, Darlene Price, and tonight we have a special program tonight, a special investigative report as the result of a former assistant superintendent and former uh, assistant principal and, and, and also a professor at the University of Cumberlands, was indicted yesterday on multiple charges and was arrested this morning. Uh, before we get started into that, though, first I want to thank NBR TV. Uh, and our, our hero, Steve Hall, that keeps us on the air, <laughs> no matter what, <laughs> my hero, Steve Hall, and, and everybody else behind the scenes, Michael Mann, and all the folks that make Truth or Politics happen. We want to thank you guys, and all the folks on Facebook tonight, thank you for watching. We hope you continue watching our coverage on many different things. So, and, and, and there was also a, a, a meeting in Pulaski County. I, I doubt I'm going to get to that tonight because there's so much to cover here, but if I can, I'm going to touch on that at the end. If not, just know this, Pulaski County people, Somerset people, we are watching what happened in that meeting last night, and we are hitting some folks with some open records requests, and we will be following up on that. So, here's what happened. First, let me read the charges. This was the indictment that happened on the 25th, yesterday. Uh, count number one, rape in the third degree. Count number two, unlawful transaction with a minor sex act with a victim under 16 years old. Count number three, solicitation to commit sodomy, third degree. And count four, official misconduct. Okay. Again, this is for... Former assistant superintendent Aaron Anderson and former principal Aaron and An assistant principal and a professor of the University of Cumberlands. Um, I, I, before we get into this too, I want to say special thank you big time to Kentucky State investigator Matt Parmley who did what uh, other people couldn't do or wouldn't do and I'm going to get into all that here in a minute. But Matt Parmley did an excellent job. Folks, putting these kind of criminal cases together, for those of you who are just watching for the first time, I, I was a criminal investigator for a lot of years, a, a federal investigator, and now I'm a defense investigator. I'm here to tell you, putting this kind of work together is difficult. It's difficult emotionally, mentally, and time-wise. And Mr. Parmley did an excellent, excellent job working 24-7. Uh, you know, this guy worked it. He worked every weekend. He did an excellent job in this investigation and the investigation continues. So I just want to say hats off to Matt Parmley, the KSP investigator, for being a true, blue, real investigator that didn't play politics and came in and did his job. And, and we all know how, how rare sometimes that can be. So we want to hats off to him. Now, here's what happened. There's a lot of rumors out there that kind of uh, misinformation about how this went down. And I just, I just want to clear the record, okay? And here's kind of how this went down. First off, confidential sources, you know, a couple, several weeks or months ago, confidential sources complained about inappropriate behavior of Aaron Anderson, <clears throat> and the school investigated this, okay? And the superintendent called in, and the superintendent, by the way, you know, kudos to him. We finally got a superintendent who was willing to do his job, and he did his job and did it right. He called Mr. Anderson in and gave him a warning. He said, you know, stop having this appropriate and inappropriate contact with the students. You know, had a list of things you better stop doing, and then told him, or I'm going to fire you. So he gave him a chance. Uh, in, in that process, the cops were notified, and the cops started their investigation, okay? During this investigation, the superintendent sees continued behavior of Aaron Anderson, that one would call what's called grooming behavior. The superintendent called him back in, um, you know, and at this point had, I think it was 11 different things that he had, that, uh, fireable things that he, that he shouldn't do, definitely... Uh, all together sh he should have been fired and the superintendent fired him actually let him read him a letter of firing Aaron Anderson then signed the letter of firing and then everybody goes to lunch well they come back to lunch or wherever they came from and here, here was a letter of resignation from Aaron Anderson now 
The superintendent has no choice. He had to submit this letter of resignation with the letter of firing to what's called the EPSB board. And I'm going to get into this board, the, the, I, I, or AKA the board from hell. It's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be the, the ethics board, the state ethics board, you know, in Frankfurt that controls this stuff. And I'm going to get into the history of this is why it's the most useless board in the state of Kentucky ever. It has been in the past. Okay. From the date of firing, then Aaron Anderson would then have a 10-day time frame to appeal this firing. What would happen is a three-people commission at the Commissioner of Education would have decided his fate. This is if this indictment had not happened. In other words, the letter of firing and his letter of resignation would have gone to this commission and three people in Frankfurt that know nothing about him, nothing about the background, would have made this decision to whether or not he's fired or not. Right there, folks, that, that's not good, okay, in my opinion, how, the, how it's set up in the Department of Education. And I'm going to get into why I think that's a problem. Now, let's go back to grooming behavior. The type of behavior Aaron Anderson's been doing, and he's been doing it for years, it's called grooming. Under, unfortunately, most states have a statute where if you are in a position of power, like a teacher, a superintendent, a principal, and you're engaged in this type of behavior, grooming behavior, where you're, you know, you're buying young girls gifts, you're, you know, inappropriately talking to them, you know, you're not being professional with these kids, and you start grooming them, um, most, most states have a statute that that's illegal. You can charge somebody for that. You know, you're texting them. You're, you're calling them at night, and how are you doing? And, you know, you know and we, we did a whole show on pedophiles and how they groom people. Unfortunately, the Kentucky Rise Statutes has no grooming statutes. There's no laws that set out, this is what grooming is, and, and if you're in a position of power in a school or something, and you're doing this to an underage kid, you can be charged with this. We're going to work on this. I'm working with uh, uh, the uh, school board, the new, you know, the new school board attorney that also, by the way, did his job in, in, this, in this, this situation. Um, and, and we're going to come up with some laws. We're going to submit them and see if we can get some grooming laws passed. Okay, so... Uh, here's the thing, folks. <laughs> this was about the most preventable thing anybody could ever see coming. And why is that? Well, because there's a whole history here. You know, people who have been following the show for years know exactly what I'm talking about. People down here, because we got a lot, a lot of people out of state. I got people in California. They know what I'm talking about. For you new people, this is not new news. Not new news. And, and I'm going to read some of the comments here in a minute. But first, let's go back in time. A little walk down history lane. <laughs> way, way back, several years ago, the OEA, the Office of Educational Accountability, okay, there was all kinds of rumblings that the superintendent at the time, which was Mike Cash, and Aaron Anderson, the assistant superintendent for our school district, um, were basically bullies. And a lot of other accusations. Okay, so the OEA comes down, they hire an investigator, Karen Timmel, and she did a scathing, and when I say scathing report, I mean scathing report on Superintendent Mike Cash and Aaron Anderson and the previous school board that was in place allowing this to go on and the atmosphere, and it was all ignored. It was ignored by Frankfurt. And what we exposed back then was the OEA, Office of Educational Accountability, was another bridge to nowhere that the taxpayers pay for to have no teeth, and, you know, the higher investigators, and, and she, one of the things, I want to read you a quote. It said, the atmosphere at the school district down here was so toxic that she doubted that the kids could even learn. This was a scathing report, and it went back to the EPSB, the other board, which is useless, and of course, nothing was done. 
you know, they were allowed to continue. There's a movie. There's a movie, it's called The Ghost in the Darkness, okay? I'm going to bring this up for a reason. First off, it's a great movie. It's based on a true story. It's about how three lions in Africa, and this really did happen, um, they, they slaughtered like 300 people. This was back during World War I. These lions did this. And so they brought in uh, a big game hunter at the time, famous big game hunter. His name was Remington. That's what the Remington rifle's named out of. Okay? In this movie, uh, the actor that played, and I got a brain fart, I can't think of his name. Oh, Michael Douglas played Remington. He tells a story. He says, you know what? These lines remind me of, of some bullies. And we were just having a conversation about bullying before the show started. This reminds me of, you know, these, these brothers I had that were bullies when I was little. And he said, you know, separately they were okay. You know, but when they got together, he goes, they were a total terror. They were a nightmare. And that's what this reminds me of. Mike Cash and Aaron Anderson together were a terror at that school. And I do mean terror. Because the amount of stuff that we exposed over a couple of years through records requests and everything else was just amazing. And those two should have been fired, both of them, a long time ago. And I'm going to get into some of that. And yeah, I'm real comfortable saying that. Now, so, um, keep in mind, at the time that we're reporting a lot of this stuff on Aaron Anderson and Mike Cash, guess who's on the board of the EPSB? Aaron Anderson's daddy, Lonnie Anderson. And uh, so he's on the board, and he's had three friends, and it doesn't matter what they do, they pretty much get away, you know, get away with it. And one of, one of the other things that ha I'm going to get into some things that happen. And let me just, let me just, somebody recently said this, and it just, it, it's held true to me. If you, and I'm quoting somebody that doesn't want to be quoted, so I'm, I'm, you out there, you know you're watching, you know I'm quoting you. If you become the elite and the power of the education structure in Kentucky, or political buddies with an educator or administrator who is one of these elites, you can pretty much get away with anything. I think that's true in the state of Kentucky. There were, there were numerous well-documented document, incidents of highly inappropriate behavior and fireball offenses of Mr. Anderson that had been reported to the former vet board, uh, to the EPSB board, okay? It got to the point to where, and, and I personally sent tons and tons of information to the Attorney General's office. Finally, the Attorney General's office, and again, the Attorney General at the time was our current governor, okay, Mr. Bashir. He finally sends an investigator, and we get 11 people to meet with this investigator, and they were so afraid they wouldn't meet anybody. We met them in the library up in Somerset. We laid out other witnesses for this investigator to go interview. One of these witnesses was a boy that was willing to come forward and, and say that he saw similar behavior out of Mr. Anderson and Cash, and he was literally afraid for his life. All those witnesses... I had talked into coming forward, and all this investigator had to do was pick up the phone and call him. I waited a while, and I called all these people back, and I followed up on it. And we did a whole show on this, and we threw the attorney general's office under the bus at that time. Not one single person that we gave them the number to, nobody from the attorney general's office ever called them and followed up. So... Matt Bevan comes on board, and whether you like Matt Bevan or not, I will say this. We went personally and sat down with Matt Bevan, and he fired the entire EPSB board. He and then later he fired the, the head of the Department of Education after we presented all this stuff. So, but before that happens, Lonnie Anderson's on the EPSB board. And, oh, by the way, the school board, at the turn, school board attorney at the time was Tim Crawford. Oh, by the way, who was in a business partnership with who else? Lonnie Anderson. So now you had, you know, this conflict of interest of the school board attorney at the time, you know, on the school board advising, and he's in business and buddies with, you know, uh, Tim Crawford at the time, for, uh, Tim Crawford, school board attorney, with Lonnie Anderson, and it didn't matter what we showed. Um, nobody was getting fired. No, nothing was happening. 
Then on October 30th, 2015, Dr. Stephen Pruitt, Commissioner of Education, reported, and somebody had reported it to him first, but he reported Aaron Anderson to the board for having sex on a school bus outside of an elementary school at basketball tournament. Now, for those of you who watched this show for many years, you know this was known as the wheels go round and round on the bus show. And, and I'm laughing and it's not funny, but you know, one of the things we tried to do is we tried to interject and make fun of these people because when it becomes so ridiculous, you know, reduce it to the ridiculous and so absurd that these people are getting away with this and nobody's doing anything, the best you can do is make fun of them. And that's kind of what we did. So what happened in this incident is old Aaron Anderson, um, he was holding a basically a, a job interview with his pants down this poor girl, this nurse, wanted a job, and she thought she had to do that to get a job, is have sex with him. This was right outside of school. At any time, a kid could have run on that bus and seen this, okay? This was proven. Okay? There's no argument that this happened. This event right there in 2015, Mr. Anderson should have been fired. Fired. But for the good old boy network, and I'm sorry if I sound angry, but, you know, I've been doing this, trying to expose this stuff since, like, 2014. We started this. Um, this, guy, this guy should never have been in the school system to have these counts and these victims, this victim. So, anyways, uh, on June 26 of 2017, so two years later, he's still in the school system. Two years later, finally... The EPSB or doesn't agree to order, um, basically where Aaron Anderson gets a slap on the wrist and does not get fired for this incident of having sex on the school bus instead of watching the kids he's supposed to be watching. Anywhere else, folks, you are fired. Now, of course not, not with Aaron Anderson's daddy on the school on the EPSB board and friends with the governor and this you know attorney general. That of course didn't happen. Also, being in business with the school board attorney. That's right, for you new people, this happened. This really happened. We covered it. We tried to get something done. And, you know, try as we did, we failed. You know, I, I failed. And I, I was furious at this. So, we ain't done yet. In 2020, <sighs> this is when Aaron Anderson, he's still there after, you know, the sex thing. Close to $200,000 uh, in grant money and, and funds are misspent that Aaron Anderson was in charge of overseeing this grant. And because of an audit, the school had to pay this back. Anywhere else, you misspend, this is the exact figure, $191,626.75. You're fired anywhere else. Not at the McCurry County School District, not back then, not when the who's your daddy of politics was going on. And at the state, Frankfurt, and the who's your daddy politics going on at Frankfurt for Aaron Anderson and Mike Cash, the superintendent at the time. And let me break from this real quick. We also proved up that Mike Cash had sent inappropriate pictures of adults and children over, no, it said illicit, illicit photographs of adults and children over the school computers and he didn't get fired for that in fact those words were mr crawford's words in a memo that he wrote and i posted that and nothing happened to him he got a slap on the wrist too because his good old boy aaron anderson's daddy was up there at the epsb board okay so this is what i'm talking about about these two just like two bully lions Then, Mr. Anderson decides that it was a good idea to post a video of him with an assault rifle making a threat on Facebook while kids, dozens and dozens of kids, are cheering him on. And, you know, he posted this. He looks drunk on a Monday night. I did not repost that video because I thought it would be inappropriate for me to repost it. Okay, he posted this on a Monday night. And he makes some kind of threat, and he's holding an assault rifle. And if I hear one more thing about the, I think it was the, the eclipse, you know, this is going to happen. Okay, here's the problem with that. Right before this, 
you had a kid, somebody found a note that a kid was thinking about, you know, a, a, a hit list. And then after that, you had another, uh, you had another incident where a kid with, you know, school shootings were, were going on all over the country. And you had kids threatening this here. And here the assistant superintendent posts something like this. Anywhere else, you are fired for that. And, and how do I know that? I did my homework, okay? I called around other superintendents, uh, uh, other school boards, and I said, what would happen to a teacher if they did this? What would happen to somebody? Gone. Oh, they'd be, they'd be gone, okay? But not here. Uh, then, okay, so there's that. Then Aaron Anderson, here's another incident. He basically threatens a police officer. This was a game warden. Okay, what happened is his son accidentally shot a deer out of season, okay? The game warden realizes this is, you know, this is a young kid, he's a minor. So he does, he does the paperwork to issue him a summons to come in and, you know, they're going to work out some kind of punishment for, for this kid, okay? So, but what happens is on a Friday night, somebody checks the wrong bo box and it gets issued as a warrant, so this officer, this game warden, goes over to the school and he's trying to he's trying to do the kid a favor to give him a heads up. Look, this was accidentally put into the system as a warrant. I can't fix it because until the judge gets back on Monday or Tuesday, so you need to know there's a warrant out for you. So you know here here he's being nice, and Aaron Anderson goes and posts another tirade on Facebook. First off, totally misstates the truth about what happens. And then, and he's angry that, you know, how dare you pick on my kid, which he wasn't picking on his kid. Then he makes this statement. He says something about, you know, anybody goes after my family. Then he says, and this is on Facebook with other kids watching. He said, it's about to get real. That's a threat to a, to a law enforcement officer. Anywhere else, your ass is fired. Sorry, but you're fired anywhere else. No, not here. Not with the superintendent being my cash. Not with the school board attorney, attorney big buddies with your, your daddy. And not with the EPSB board who got all of this. All of this as it was happening. Because I sent it to him. And I sent it to the attorney general's office. But when the good old boy uh, who's your daddy politics of Frankfurt takes over, kids take a back seat and nobody cares. So, we kept covering this. We kept covering this. We kept having shows on it. At one point, we did a show, and we covered a lot of this stuff and other stuff. And Aaron Anderson goes on his Facebook page again with all these kids on there, and he writes, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. He writes, block this bitch, meaning me. So, on Facebook, this is an assistant superintendent with, you know, hundreds of kids on his Facebook page. He writes that. By the way, that's how I got my nickname, the Killer Bee, because that night we wouldn't say the B word. <laughs> so I think it was Harvey Meadows came up with, oh, the B, the B word. And that's how we got the thing of killer, we're the Killer Bees, truth or politics. Okay. So, of course, Aaron Anderson tried to deny this later on, and he was forced to take it down. But here we go again. Anywhere else... You're fired. Something happens to you. Nothing happened to him. All of these things, nothing happened to him. Okay, so in a board meeting, 427-2020, Mercury County School Board meeting, several, several positions were abolished in a unanimous 5-0 to zero position. Okay, this is in 2020. After all this happens, we finally get a different superintendent. We, we get, my cash is gone. It takes a lot, but we get him gone. Okay, and what it takes to get Mike Cash gone is somebody put a camera at the middle school during school hours, and Mike Cash was on camera doing the nasty round and third base with an employee, with a teacher. This is the superintendent. Finally, and even then, you had two idiot school board members that wouldn't vote to fire him. Again, folks, you can't make this stuff up. And it happened. This happened. <laughs> this happened. So we organized a whole demonstration. We had people, we had 100 people in that room that night for that school board meeting to try to force Mike Cash out. And that night, Aaron Anderson should have gone with them. 
and it didn't happen. But at least we got rid of my cash, okay? And we got rid of the school board attorney, and then the new superintendent came on board. So then the school board superintendent decides, well, one way to get rid of Aaron Anderson, since nothing else is working, is abolish the, super, the assistant superintendent position. So the school board, in order to get rid of Ander, Aaron Anderson, vote unanimously to eliminate the assistant superintendent position. He's gone. He's gone. Not in the school anymore. He was gone. Then here's what happens. Then, in June 2020, at the request of the high school principal, Sharon Privet, and Sharon Privet, the high school principal at that time was Sharon Privet, she decides to bring Aaron Anderson back as the assistant principal. Now, this goes down, and we did a whole show on it, as probably one of the biggest, stupidest, most irresponsible decisions anyone in the history of history ever made. We did a show on it. And I don't know, Ms. Privet, I hope you're watching. And I hope you remember what I said. I said on the show, very clearly, I did not stutter. You own him now. You had other people that you could have picked for this assistant principal position. She knew his track record. She knew about him. And yet, instead of picking one of these other fully qualified people, you made the irresponsible and negligent choice to bring Aaron Anderson back into the school, thereby uh, basically turning the kids in the school district into your guinea pigs, because that's what happened. You brought him back, and I warned you. I warned you. I said, you own him now. Whatever he does, you own it. Miss Privet, you own it. How nice of you now that you're retired, you know, that, that you know, you're not going to have to answer for this. But, you know, here in Truth of Politics, we're going to hold you accountable, okay? Because you brought him back. You did this. You brought him back. I warned you. You own it. You, you know, again, one of the most irresponsible decisions any administrator ever made. And that's you. You brought Aaron Anderson back. And you know what? Miss, Miss Privet, you should go on the air, and I'm inviting you on the show. You should personally come on the show and apologize to all the parents, especially to the victims. You know, this victim, and I'm, and I'm guessing there's others, because we're working on that. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. You should personally apologize to these people because you brought him back. You're the one that set this up. He was out of the school system. And, you know, I, I just I can't state enough how absolutely irresponsible that decision was. And I'm sorry if I sound angry, but, you know, this was avoidable. This victim was avoidable. Uh, we, had, we fought for years exposing this stuff. We fought against the EPSB board. And people who follow this show for the last 13 years, you, you know what I'm talking about. The e Frankfurt, shame on Frankfurt. The idiots at Frankfurt back then. You know, you owe this community an apology. Because you created this. You, you enabled this. You know, you flew, you didn't help us. We, you know, we went to the EPSB board. We, we sent all this stuff on Cash and Anderson to the EPSB board. You had an investigator tell you these guys were dangerous. You know, you knew. You knew what you had down here. And not only did you not help us, but you threw up every roadblock you could for good old daddy, who's your daddy, politics. And now look what's happened. Our kids down here became guinea pigs. And shame on anybody who had anything to do with this. Shame on you. Shame on you. So, um, now we're here. Generations of allegations have been made for years about this. This is not a secret. Um, and yet, this was enabled by political favors. And it just amazes me that this, this has happened. And I just want to say to, there's a lot of, 
there's been a lot of accusations out there, and there's been a lot of people afraid to come forward. I have interviewed people that I'm co convinced um, were also victims of either Cash or, or Anderson, and people were just afraid to come forward. If you were ever, ever thinking about coming forward, listen to me right now. If you were a victim of these two idiots, these two pieces of, I can't, I can't cuss on the air. If you were, if you feel that your kid or you're an adult now and you were a victim of these guys, please come forward now. I, I'm begging you, please. Now's the time to come forward. Back this kid up. Yeah, the, the kid that, that's coming forward right now, can you imagine the weight on that little kid's shoulders? You know, the, right now is the time to do the right thing. I, I'm begging you to do the right thing and come forward. And, and don't let this kid stand alone. Now's the time. And I, and I know there's people out there. How do, I, people, how do you know this? Well, I've interviewed people, okay, and, and tried everything. And let me just, here, here's something else. I'm going to read you... Just today, some of the comments today on Facebook. Now these were, I'm not going to read the names, but these were, they were posted public on Facebook today. This should give you an idea of the atmosphere and what's been going on for decades now. Okay? First, you know, I posted the arrest of Aaron Anderson today. And these are some of the comments. Someone got him out $100,000. Somebody else, bunch of crap. They, they were complaining because he, he got out of jail immediately. Yeah, yeah and, and no, I don't know what that means. Listen to this. It's been going on for years. He just now finally got caught. I'm sorry, but he should have been taken out of the school a long time ago. Should not have been allowed to be paid. No kidding. Uh, I definitely agree with that. I'm surprised. These are all different people. I'm surprised it took this long, to be honest. He's been after young girls as long as he's been here. How disgusting. Daddy can't help him now. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, yes, I knew. Yes, I knew about him. And then somebody writes, oh, goodness, you just never know. And then somebody responds. You did if you were a student within the past 15 years. This was never a big secret. And, that, and people kept hitting yes, 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 likes. You know, in other words, everybody knew. Everybody knew what he was doing. Everybody knew what Cash was doing. You know, this was not a secret. And yet, you know, the school board back then and, you know, the good old boy politics of Frankfurt, you let it go on. Uh, here's another one. So was involved in the situation in 2017 and got reprimanded. Was still allowed to be around students. Damn, it sounds just as corrupt down there as it is up here. I don't know where this guy's from, but you're probably right. Uh, it's been years. He was sent away when I was in something due to inappropriate activity with the child, and then they brought him back a couple of years later. Another person, crazy, must be one of the elites there. Another one. He got away with this in Whitley County years ago. I was shocked, shocked when they hired him in McCrary County. These are the comments that have been going on all day long. Folks, this was not a secret. Everybody knew. And in order to give this guy a job and political favors, people in Frankfurt turned their back on the kids here, on the parents here, Turn, turn, you know, and people here on the former school board turn their back. Uh, the superintendent at the time, Mike Cash, he of course turned his back because, because you know, he was he, he was almost as bad, if not worse. And the two were bullies, and it was all preventable. It was all preventable. Had somebody done their job when they were supposed to do their job, this was preventable. Um, the new, we had a show and I had a stack. I don't know if you guys remember this. I did an open records request because we had been sending things to the Attorney General's office. Sending things, sending things, sending things. And to the EPSB board. I literally had a stack this thick 
when I did an open records request of I'm going to see what everything you got. And, and it was this thick on Aaron Anderson and my cash sent back to us. And nobody did anything. You know, it's it just, this went on for, for years and years and years. And I'm just, I'm just amazed. Finally, you know, again, to, to this kid, you are one brave kid. You are braver than all these adults that didn't protect anybody. This kid is braver than all these adults, these school board members. Frankfurt, this kid, this takes a lot of courage, folks, to be standing alone in a wind like this and come forward and tell the truth. And I just... I just worry about this kid, and I worry about all of our kids here in this school district because there's no doubt in my mind with this type of grooming behavior and things that he was doing, there's a real good chance there's other victims out there. So I'm hoping that tonight, courage is contagious. I say it all the time on the show. Courage is contagious. I'm hoping by this brave little girl, this amazing, brave little girl coming forward, that this will inspire somebody else. And if you're an adult out there, too, like this guy just saying, oh, I knew about this. Oh, okay. So you knew about it? Why don't you grow a pair and come forward? You know, I was so frustrated. You can't know how many people I interviewed during this time frame when all this was going on. Grown men in positions of power over at that school he would call me on the phone and, yeah, well, I saw this, and didn't have the guts to come forward. Shame on you. You're guilty of this, too. Okay? You enabled this. The, the, the grown men over there that didn't have the balls to come forward and, and lay this stuff out, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. You know, and I have, I had to, I'm not going to say who it is. I'm not going to throw you under the bus because it was an anonymous conversation. I spent a lot of time trying to get this person to come forward. And then he, oh, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to pray about it. Well, you know what? Now I hope you drop to your knees and you pray tonight for this kid. Because you know what? Maybe you could have saved this kid from this. Had you done your job and come forward. And you know who the hell you are out there I'm talking to. You remember that conversation we had on the phone. And I, I'm just so mad that you didn't have the guts to do what a little kid had the guts to do and come forward. I'm sorry, but I'm emotional about this. I got grandkids. As you guys do, I got a little grandson up in Somerset. And if somebody did something like this to them, I'm sorry. I don't know what I would do. Give me a minute. <laughs> sorry. This is the first time in 13 years I've gotten emotional on this show. But this is worth getting emotional over. <clears throat> the people who sat in the silence... And did nothing. The people who sat in silence in Frankfurt and enabled this. Please stop being silent. If you're ever going to show an ounce of courage, thank you. I'm, I'm okay. All right. I'm just, this is more mad than anything. If you were ever going to ever come forward, please, I'm begging you, come forward now. This investigator is taking this seriously. He, he's one of the best investigators I've ever, I've ever seen, okay? This guy's good. If you're afraid, I'll come with you and talk to him. I'll come with you and talk to him because, you know, now's the time to come forward. Don't let this little kid stand alone. Please don't let this little kid stand alone. I know people out there have information, I, and you've told me you do. Please come forward. Okay, um, let me see what I missed. And again, I apologize for getting emotional. But this is just, if you're going to get emotional about something, this is, this is worth getting emotional about. And I'm getting tangled up here again. Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. And again, uh, let's see, generations of allegations. Uh, you know, I thought this would take an hour. It didn't. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Well... Of course, he's innocent until proven guilty, and nobody knows what a jury is going to do. But these are serious, serious allegations. Um, he was arrested this morning. He did bond out. Well, I think he was arrested. Yet. No, he was arrested this morning, and then he did bond out pretty quick. So, and the bond was $100,000.
And let's see. I think I read the indictment. Okay. I don't think I missed anything. A lot of you have been posting things all day long about this, and I read some of it, and there's a lot more. Um, and, you know, I, I, I spent the last two days answering phone calls, and people asking me, how did this happen? <laughs> I, I'm serious. I, I've gotten phone calls all day long. I've been talking people out of state. How did this happen? I've got other news media calling me because they knew that a lot of news media back around when we got my cash fired and everything, a lot of news people are call, calling me across the state. How on earth did this happen? You know what? That's a good question. How did this happen? Well, you know, a lot of people didn't do their job. A whole lot of people. You know, um, a lot of investigators, Attorney General's office, EPSB board. You know, and one investigator did their job, and she did it. And I had posted that report. That report was it was thorough. And, and I don't know. I, I, I didn't. You know, people keep saying, "When are you, when's your ne next book come out?" My next book's going to be called "While No One's Watching," and it's about stuff like this. It's about here in McCrary County. A lot of stuff in Pulaski County. It's about a lack of check and balances in the system. And in Kentucky, unfortunately, we have a great state here in a lot of ways. But one way we don't have a great state is the politics and the good old boy who's your daddy politics that exist in Frankfurt. That enables a lot of this stuff. That enables, uh, you know, law enforcement to steal out of the evidence rooms. And there's still no requirement for to have evidence rooms. They have outside checking. These boards, I've talked about these boards before. A lot of jobs in Kentucky are controlled, all the state jobs, by these boards. And, you know, if you're not in favor with, you know, the sitting governor, whoever that is, and by the way, it's both parties. Let me be clear. You know, I went after this current governor big time, and everybody knows who followed this show I did when he was attorney general, and then the governor then and his EPSB board. But it's both parties. Our state legislature needs to be on this. You need to get rid of some of these boards. Just recently, the Kentucky Bucket and Wrestling Board, another corrupt, I'm sorry, but it's a corrupt board. When you have these kinds of conflicts of interest, and I'm saying that lightly, when you have, you know, se these different boards self-dealing, good old boy, who's your daddy politics, and the only reason you're on that board is because the sitting governor, you know, you owed him, he owed you because you got him elected. These boards have a lot of power. These boards have a lot of power in, in our education system. And these boards are easily corrupted, which is exactly what happened in this case. Exactly what happened. Um... That whole, that whole EPSB board, let's back up for a minute. When Aaron Anderson was caught and admitted to having sex on a school bus as a job interview, you know, um, when that went to the EPSB board, that whole board was compromised because his daddy was buddy-buddy with these, this board. That board should have never reviewed this. That should have went to some other board, somebody that didn't know Aaron Anderson, and he should have been fired then. This is what I'm talking about, about these boards. That didn't happen. So, uh, we'll see what happens after this. Um, I, I just hope, and again, I apologize for becoming emotional. I, I just feel so sorry for this kid that, that came forward, this little hero, because that's what she is, you know, to, to the parents out there of this kid. I don't know, you know, I don't know who they are. I don't know who, this kid's a hero. And I'm hoping other kids and other parents will become heroes too. And if you're an adult and you know something about this, and if you know something about other things, you know, again, I don't mean to be the dead horse. Please come forward. Please, now's the time, folks. Now's the time. Come forward. You can call me. Call, call the office here. You know, call me anonymously. 606 376 5931. 606 376 5931. Call me. I will talk to you. Um, and if you if you want, I, I will go with you to sit with Investigator Parmley. This is a nice guy. This guy knows what he's doing. You know, you won't, you know, it, he will handle this correctly. Okay. So.
So I got a few minutes. <laughs> Let's switch gears here for a minute. <laughs> The Somerset City Council had a meeting, and we had posted, you know, we were because people got me the copy of this resolution where there's this $100 million bond. Yes, I said $100 million bond. And we just asked the question, hey, did the, did the City Council know about this? Was it, you know, are they going to vote on it? And post three or four questions about this. And, of course, they had a City Council meeting uh, last night, Monday night. Okay, so this guy got up, and... <laughs> Let, let me just say, I'm going to have to be real short with this, okay? I'm just going to encapsulate this. Please, first off, go watch the city council meeting yourself. Watch it. And, and, and this ain't just about, you know, Somerset, Pulaski County. There's a lot of people in McCurry County that work up there. You know, I've got relatives that live up there. So we're in close proximity here with Pulaski County. And one of the things, they had a guy got up there because, because the city council members did not have a heads up. I mean, Friday, they were handed this thing, and they thought they were going to have to vote on it. And I think they were going to have to vote on it. And then when people, we posted it, and people started, you know, firing questions, then I think they kind of backed off of it. But they had a guy get up there, <laughs> and the first words out of his mouth is, well, I'm not an expert in bonds. Don't take my word. Go watch this meeting. He said that. Well, I'm not really an expert on bonds, okay? But then he... he persisted in saying there's no way words to the effect there's no way the city can be held liable for this build no way the city can be held liable um and, and, and different city council for the first time and kudos to the somerset city council because they started asking questions and firing questions you know is there any way the city can be held liable in lawsuits anything nope city's fully identified now this is the guy who just said at the beginning I'm not an expert in bonds. Then, of course, Mayor Keck, who talks out of both sides of his mouth all the time, and I'm real comfortable saying that, he's sitting there saying, yep, no, no way the city can be, at, you know, at risk. Nobody, no way, and he's echo, echo chamber in here. No, no way, no way. And, and, and one of the city councilmen said, well, and can we get some of that language in this resolution? And Mayor Keck says, oh, it's in there. Okay, go read it. I've posted it. No, it ain't. Nowhere in there does it say the, there is no way that the city of Somerset can be held liable or in any way, shape, or form for the bond or for the bill. Okay? It doesn't say that. And because it's just not true. And then, I think it was Kex, no, I think it was the city attorney. Go back and rewatch it. Make sure I'm, I'm right. That it was the city attorney said this. He says, well, the, it's in the KRS statute. KRS statute says that. No, it don't. No, it don't. Go read the KRS statute, okay? Let me be clear. And I've called around and talked to I don't know how many people who really are bond experts, and they said the same thing. No, this don't sound right. This don't, this, 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 this don't sound right, okay? No KRS statute can indemnify a city from any li liability. No KRS statute can do that, okay? And this one doesn't. So... You know, perhaps this build is probably, I mean, there's a real good chance that this is the, you know, this is a good thing. There's a chance this is a good thing. There's a real chance that this is going to be, turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to Somerset and Pulaski County, okay? I'm not saying that. But let us remember Mayor Keck's track record. You know, the University of Somerset Bridge to Nowhere. The 30 grand he still has never explained he spent on everybody's vacations. The Leche contract that nobody read, nobody voted on. The city attorney said, oh, I didn't read it. And the only person who signed it was a city employee. And somehow that got passed, okay? The track record for Mayor Keck and his city attorney sucks, quite frankly. And here's my suggestion. Again, this may be some good, okay? It may be. I I'm not saying it's not. But if I was a city council member, what I would do is I would hire a independent, real legal expert. You know, somebody that's got Esquire behind their name. The, the law offices of Dewey, De Dewey, Sue them, and how? <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's going to keep you from getting sued if this goes south. Because builds can go south. You know, we just had, a, you know, all over the news today, a bridge collapse, okay? Let me give you a hypothetical here, real quick, a hypothetical. 
Okay. Somebody hires a builder in this project. And, and I don't know who the builders are. Don't know. You know, I have no idea. Let's say, hypothetically, they hire a builder. The builder decides to build a city for all kinds of materials that meet spec, that meet code. But yet, what he does is he goes out and he builds and, uh, and builds with stuff that's cheaper. Okay? Like, that never happens. <laughs> We've already had lawsuits in Kentucky where exactly those things happen. Okay? So this thing gets built. It's a big apartment complex and stores and stuff. And then it caves in and kills a bunch of people. Now, you can bet another law firm called Do You, do you, do you Sue Them and How is going to be suing. And what that law firm, I guarantee, will do is they're going to name everybody in that lawsuit. And they're going to name the city of Somerset. Okay? Now, no KRS statute is going to keep you from that. It's just not. And anybody who tells you that, you need to go read the statute because it ain't in there. Okay? Um, what's going to happen is the law firm of Do You, do, do you Sue Them and How <laughs> is going to name the city of Somerset. And guess who's the only person who can then decide, based on evidence, back and forth and discovery, if the city of Somerset can or cannot uh, be in that lawsuit? It's going to be this thing called, oh, you know, a judge. Okay? That, that, that's what can happen. Now, is that going to happen here? Probably not. Okay, but if I were a if I were on the city council with Mayor Keck's track record and this city attorney's track record, which you well know that we have well covered, and you know about it, and a guy who stands up and the first words out of his mouth is "I'm not a bond expert," <laughs> and but then he proceeds to tell you um, uh, legal stuff that it, that an expert you know should know or not know. If I were you, I highly suggest you get an expert. Yeah, go ahead. I'm getting a question. Do you have the, that KRS statute listed? It's it's low. It's posted and it's on the meeting last night. I don't have it right here in front of me because I was I just didn't bring it right here in front of me. But um, we'll post it. I'll get it and post it. But you can look at it. That KRS statute. I think it's 600 series or whatever it is. And he says that right in the beginning. Go watch it. Don't take my word for it. Go watch the city council meeting. Oh, and right at the end of the city council meeting, and when I say Mayor Keck talks out of both sides of the mouth, first he echo chambers, yep, city can't be held liable, no way, no how. Nope, city can't be responsible for the bond, no way, no how. It's in the statutes, it's just that. Then he turns around and pay very close attention to what he says. At the end he says, well, everything has risk, but in this case the risk is worth it. Well, that's funny. That's not what you just said. You just played everybody and told everyone in the city council meeting there is no risk. That's what you put forth. And then he turns around, go watch that meeting and see it for yourself. He says, well, everything has risk, but this risk may be worth it. And it may be. And, 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 and you know, this may be a good risk. This may be the best build ever. But do you really want to put your trust and faith into the track record of Mayor Keck and, and his city attorney after what you already know they've done. Um, all I can say is if I was a city council member, there's no way I would. I would get an independent law firm that is an expert in this. Make sure you have all the documents, okay? Because it doesn't look like you got them all. Make darn sure you get them and have them look at this before you vote on this. Because I'm going to tell you just what I told Miss Sharon Privet and Aaron Anderson. You all vote this in, and it's $100 million, and it does go south, you own it. Mayor Keck's going to be gone. You guys are going to own This will be your legacy. So, And it may be a great legacy. It may be perfect. But do you want to take that chance? I wouldn't, not without somebody who really is an expert to look at this. That's that's just my two cents because you know I've had city councilmen on the phone with me you know, last Friday, uh, Monday, and I'm going to tell the rest of the city councilmen what I told them. Get an expert, a real expert who does who does these bonds, and make sure just make sure that it's okay. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So anywho, uh, we are just.
about out of time. I cannot believe I covered this in under an hour. I thought, sure, we got our TV guy here filming. He goes, I I'm in for the long haul. If this takes two hours, I'm in for it. And I'm like, no, nah, it may take two hours, and it didn't. I guess I talk fast. I'm not used to having my, my hecklefish is not here tonight. Big Dan Gibson's not here tonight. So uh, we miss him being here. Otherwise, uh, for, for the folks in the background, any did I miss anything, any questions that you can think of? Okay, well, we are actually under time, which is, I'm shocked at myself that I'm under time. Folks, we will stay on this. We will keep following this. And please, again, here's my phone number. If you want to talk to me about any of this, it's 606-376-5931. Again, please don't let this little hero, this little girl, please don't let her stand alone. I'm begging you, you adults out there that I've had contact you know who you are. I've had conversations with you. You've told me what you've seen. You know who you are. Please come forward. Please. Thank you. And we will see you next time on Truth or Politics. Thanks.